performance. This spring is going to be like the London Underground in the rush hour. Crazy time. What a result for Nigel Benn, and he deserves it. Fought brilliantly, courageously, and he's still the world BC Super Middleweight Champion. Well, it's a long time since we've had excitement like this at a British fight. Uh, now, no, these were the questions that Nigel was saying. If this guy goes long in the fight, I guarantee I'll stop him. And he knew what he was talking about. Well, tremendous performance. Even if Ben hadn't won tonight, it was going to go down as his career best performance. Just the sheer courage and the technique and, and the, the, the tactics in his battle. But he's won the fight. He's punched the life right out of Jim McClellan, the most dangerous man on the planet. Nigel Ben is still a WBC Super Middleweight Champion. And that's the Border Control doctor there in the corner with Jeremy McClellan. Just making sure that he's OK. And we're still not sure. I mean, obviously, the punches do it. We're not hiding that. But there seemed to be another reason, Jim. I said to you seconds before, he's blinking heavily. I haven't seen that before. Now, I think it was a heart problem, Reza. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doubting McClellan's courage, but he decided he would... The first time he went on the floor, it was the same punches that he's been taking all night long. But suddenly the chin could still take the punches, but the heart could not. Down he went, head as clear as a bell, eyes as clear as a bell, nothing wrong with him. Apart from the, the fact that that punch in the jaw had an effect on his heart. We can't question the man's courage with the punches he's taken leading up to this particular round. But Nigel Benn has just punched the fight right out of Gerald McClellan here. In the fight trade, this is one of the biggest upsets for many years, I promise you that. Well, especially the start then, there have been very few fighters who have come back, but is it a case of, once again, of the bully, when, when the tables are turned, it's not used to taking the punishment and can't do it, but what a tremendous performance and a tremendous finish from see Once again, not a devastating knockdown, McClellan has decided to go on the floor, looked at the referee and just stayed there. So, in effect, it's actually a retirement from Gerald McClellan. He, on his knees to the finish, see Ben still plenty of heart, plenty of fight. Everything Ben has, he dishes out, never quits. But here we see Gerald McClellan actually quitting. Well, that's what they call punching the life out of you. And he's lying on the floor now, McClellan, Jim. Now he's got to get the stewards and the second security boys have got to get everybody out of the way that's the border control doctor there I think this could be exhaustion directed of dehydration I don't well, think it's the punches that he's so. taken they will certainly take well, him off the hospital overnight oh absolutely well let's hope he's going to be okay Ben doesn't realise it yet by the way while he's doing this and I'm sure that at least he would go over there but we're nearly, we're nearly ready, I think, for Gary to try and get hold of him now and explain what's happening. Over to Gary. Yeah. Nigel, that not only was your greatest ever performance, that was one of the great boxing performances of all time in this country. Yeah, well, everyone, all you lot were cheering him up, giving it this, giving it there. I knew he wouldn't be able to go the distance. I know you... Yeah. Nigel. No, no, you listen to me. I'd like to thank... My trainer Kevin Saunders, everyone's saying, oh, we ain't going nowhere without Jimmy Tim. Proved it wrong. And not only that, the person I'd like to thank most of all is Paul McKenna, who hypnotized me and made me believe in myself. I don't care what I know. You listen to me. I'm always listening yeah. to you. Can I, listen? No. Can I talk McKenna? about the fight? Because it was yeah. a fabulous okay. performance, Nigel. Okay. In the first round. And thanks to my man, uh, Peter Fight McCallum is very badly hurt, actually. I've got a stretcher in here, Nigel. Uh, McClellan, sorry, Mike yeah, yeah, McClellan yeah. is very yeah, badly hurt. So let's just move away gone. a second to give Mike a bit of a chance. Nigel, Nigel, in the first round, uh, Gerald McClellan, sorry, getting confused yeah, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, uh, in the first round, yeah. actually, yeah. I, had to, I had to help push you yeah. back in there. I had to help push you back in there. Daddy, the first Daddy, round, you a lot of Daddy trouble. Daddy brought him over here to bash me out, yeah. mate. Let me tell you that now. I'm saying what I want to say. Daddy brought him here to try and bash me out, mate. No, Frank, no chance. Bill Kelsey, can you just get no out of the way chance. so we can see? Can I just, Nigel, talk about that performance? It was sheer guts on your part to get back in there after the first round. I don't care if he knocked me down, I was ready to go with him. Whatever he wanted to do, I was ready to match him. 
All the way, mate, all the way. Now, now you might start believing in the Dark Destroyer. Start believing I'm number one, second to no one. The other person I'd like to... He made a believer out of me. Okay. We're going to wrap this interview because we have a serious problem in the ring here, Jim, with Gerald McClellan. We have a serious problem with Jim McClellan. Jim Rosenthal. Yes, of course, that is a very worrying aspect of this fight. Gerald McClellan continues to receive attention in the ring there. And we, of course, and everybody here, I'm sure, can only hope that the challenger makes a complete recovery. We have a program just after midnight tonight, and of course, we will give you the very latest details on the situation here. We all hope Gerald McClellan will be fully recovered by then. But what a performance by this man, Nigel Benn, and that is a very worrying sight indeed. And a concern spreading around this arena. Really, it's been wonderful performance by this fella. You can't take it away from him. What Nigel Benn has done here tonight, he has proved everybody wrong. And he has done it, showing unbelievable fighting heart. Hello once again from the London Arena. Earlier on tonight, we had a magnificent battle between two natural-born hitters, Nigel Benn and Gerald McClellan. McClellan, the American, collapsed in his corner after the fight. He was unconscious for five minutes. He left London Arena on a stretcher. Nigel Benn, too, left in an ambulance. Both went to hospital. The good news is that McClellan has had a precautionary brain scan. The doctors say that things are looking OK at the moment and McClellan should be released later this weekend. Nigel Benn has also had an X-ray on a possible broken jaw. The feeling is he'll be OK to go home very shortly as well. John Morris from the Board of Control you did a few things right here that helped that situation. Well, I hope so. Um, we, we've had uh, a lot of scares over the years, and when Michael Watson was hurt, there, there was a complete examination of what we did, and we turned our policies into regulations, and they've been adapted and improved since, and tonight, well, I'm delighted to say it all worked. Just tell us what you instigated in that corner that helped things so much, or we hope helped things so much. Well, exactly. Um, there are people that say there should always be an anaesthetist present, um, but in fact what our, what our policy is, is, is that there has to be a doctor present working with the paramedics who can intubate, that's get tubes down so the fighter can breathe, and if necessary stabilise a head injury with drugs, and for that you do need somebody experienced in anaesthetics. But tonight, quite frankly, with the size of the show and these two very important world championships, and we all knew, and of course, weren't we right, mm. that Ben and McClellan was going to be explosive, I said, right, we will go the whole hog. We, not only did we have an anaesthetist present, and he was great, although he didn't actually have to use any drugs, but we had four other doctors, uh, two ambulances, two sets of paramedics, and really everything was right. In fact, right down to the fact that I myself, with my mobile, alerted London Hospital's neurological unit, who of course knew the show was on, we told them that, and said, right, we've got a boxer on his way, will you be ready for him? Just briefly, uh, it looked very worrying, millions of people out there were worried when they saw that live on yeah. ITV, how worried were you? Well, I was very worried, of course I am. I mean, I'm relieved now that it all worked, but I just have the, the I think, the chastening thought, what would I, be, I, what would I be thinking if it hadn't worked? Mm. Well, it did, and remember, it doesn't just have to work here at London Arena. Sure. It has to work on about 230, 35, 40 shows a year all over the country. That's what we've got to make certain hands. John, thanks very much indeed. Now, sadly, I have to report we've had some very disturbing news from the hospital about Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan, the American fighter who collapsed at the end of his fight with Nigel Benn, has gone into surgery for a removal of a blood clot on his brain. Uh, that surgery is expected to last for most of the night and there'll be a further bulletin from the London Hospital at six o'clock this morning in what uh, four and three quarter hours time. When we were with you about an hour ago, the news from the hospital was 
optimistic. We understood here that uh, McClellan was OK, but obviously in the last hour, things have deteriorated there now. And it's hard really to pull your thoughts together at moments like this because Nigel Benn fought the fight of a lifetime out there. He dug deeper really than it's uh, probably right for any professional sportsman to expect. It was a wonderful triumph for Nigel Benn, but at the moment now, as we sit in London Arena, and the time ticks around to 1.15, all our thoughts are with Gerald McClellan inside the London Hospital. Good night to you all. Push him back. Now they're looking. See, now they do have. See, as we have stated before, clearly this might be a fracture of the orbit. It yeah. might be that with that headbutt, he has fractured his orbit. You don't know. In, in which place, what's it going to be? Bernie, we can only speculate. Let's hope it's not a head injury or anything of that nature. Well, there's something when a boxer just quits voluntarily. It's, it's too much heart, too many things going on in a fight that you're ahead. It just doesn't compute. 
something is wrong. Whatever it is, is wrong with him. Hey. And he's laying down here. They're going to have to take him. They've got the stretcher in. Unlike Mexico City, we got two paramedics here. We've got the doctor right on top of him. This is baffling. It's one of the most bizarre scenes I've ever seen. In one corner, they've got Gerald McClellan over in the corner there with doctors trying to uh, make sure he's okay. And on the other side, they've got a victorious celebratory Nigel Penn being interviewed. They're putting a neck brace on him, which indicates it could be a neck injury as well, or just the fact that they don't want to run the risk. There could be something wrong with the neck so that you don't want to move him. That's exactly the right thing to do, by the way. Medically, excellent work. Excellent work in the corner. Well, Ferdy, if he does have a serious injury, either to the eye or to the head or whatever, at least he had the sense to kneel down and stop. Yep. May, may, that's the way you have to look at it, but what will that make it? Will that make it a disqualification? What will that make it? Because that happened on a butt. So this is not by no means over. This title fight is still going on, only it's going on with one man on the canvas. His eyes are, we're told now, his eyes are closed. He appears to be unconscious. Did I just see his eyes open? Maybe it's just hope. Right. And it might just be, it might just be exhausting. Also, you know, it might just be they're giving him oxygen now. Now oxygen comes on. Oh. They've got a neck brace on him. I mean, McClellan is being treated as if he is a serious case right now. We're told and he the, was spitting up blood earlier. But that that goes with, you know, that goes with being in this kind of a fight. I, I, I discount that. But I think uh, a headbutt uh, and uh, and the fact that he voluntarily went down feeling that there's something wrong with him someplace uh, requires Examination. You have to do CAT scans. You're gonna have to do a lot of things to find out what this guy's got. This in the meantime, we don't know who's the champion. This continues to be just loopy. The crowd is cheering, chanting, almost oblivious to the fact. Ladies and gentlemen, please clear the aisles. McClellan we need to take. Is having Gerald this kind of McClellan difficulty in his corner. Aisle. Please clear the aisles. Assist us. We need to get him out quickly. Clear Now a smart the announcement Thank by you for your Jimmy Lennon Jr. to clear the aisles. They may have to rush him. Uh, into an ambulance. Yes, I think they will not have the same trouble out in Mexico. A very strong Clear police here. the aisles, please. Thank you for your assistance. So this is a, a sad sight Clear indeed, as Gerald McClellan is attended to, being uh, given oxygen in the corner there by the uh, physicians. I must say, in all the years I've been in boxing, I've never seen a guy just quit in a championship fight because he recognizes he's got an injury, can't see, he's got double vision, something's going on with him. And in the meantime, he hasn't moved. His eyes continue to be closed. Meanwhile, the celebration continues for Nigel Venn. You talk about a schizophrenic situation. This is crazy. One place is jubilation, and the other place is serious dejection because anything could be happening here. We're going to try to get Nigel Venn over here, Ferdy, so we can get an explanation. Nigel Venn making his way over to our left, and Ferdy Pacheco is making his way over. Meanwhile, the doctors continue to work on Gerald McClellan. They continue to work on McClellan, the paramedics and the doctors over there. So our prayers are with Gerald McClellan in the corner. Let's go over to Ferdy, who's standing by with Nigel Benn. The one person I want to say hello to back in America is Roy Jones. He's a top boy. If I'm going to class myself as the best super middle in the world, I've got to be Roy Jones. And Roy Jones, glad, I'm very happy for you beating the, the mouth, James Tony. What, what do you think happened when he quit in, in such a, a, a apparently not hurt kind of a situation? What was, was that? He was hurt. He sustained a lot of punching power to the head. He's did did the, the butt do anything to him? Did no, you butt no, heads? No, 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 no. Come on, come on, we're in the middle of something. No, 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 no. You look at you predict him will win. No, so this is my time now. Okay. My time. And the thing about it, you know, it wasn't that to do with the head butt. He just couldn't sustain the pressure. All them two rounds and all that don't mean nothing. Because when you go in the later rounds, that's when you find well, out. But were you still. shocked to see him go down on a knee yeah. and stay there? I'm glad I was gonna finish him there and then. But you thought what's he going down I for? Thought, no, no, I didn't think he was going down. He sustained a lot of punching power all through the rounds. But Nigel, there wasn't one clear shot to put him down. I mean, the, the TV no, shows you missed twice, no. and the guy yeah, goes yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so what? He put me down twice. But that's when it proved that you know I've got a heart. And you have. Right, well, me, right me off. Don, right now Nigel, there's a guy laying on a stretcher over right, there. Don't keep me. Wait, wait, wait. Let, 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 let me, right. Nigel. Don't leave. Don't leave a minute. 
uh, the guy's laying on a stretcher over there. If it was ruled for a foul, then this whole thing's up in the air. You don't know who the champion is. No, I don't think so. I think that uh, I don't know what the ruling is going to be, but all I can say is that Nigel Ben proved to the world today he got a lot of hearts, a lot of Keonis. He fought his behind off. He was outside the ring, got back in, got knocked down twice. He rose to the occasion, got to give him his just due. Well, you deserve to have the last he laugh, so I'm giving you the last laugh. Tell it. <laughs> Tell it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Freddie. I think it's one person. I, I think I need to fight to class myself as the best in the world is Roy Jones. I know Roy Jones is different class, but to me to class myself the best in the world, I think I would have to fight Roy Jones. But at the that's moment, unified, that's unified. That's another WBA title, and then okay. you got two, and Roy has one, okay. and then we go for Roy. Just like I All promised. Right. You. Well, congratulations. I've seen a lot of your fights, great, but great none fight. as gutty as that. Great, great fight, man. Great fight. Back to Steve. No, uh, well, just a minute. Let's let's look and see. All right, McClellan, McClellan still on the campus. Look at the difference between here and Mexico City. These guys are really taking care of business. They got a neck brace on them. They got oxygen on them. They're trying to clear. What could be wrong? They got everything on him. I don't know what happened to Gerald, but he quit on his knee. And so we don't know it until we can sit down and talk to him to find out. But all I can say is that we had one great fight on Showtime and that we was demonstrated tonight by Nigel Ben, a man with a lot of heart well, and a lot of intestinal courage. You, you got that right, but we do have a consideration. This guy hasn't moved. He hasn't opened his eyes. He got oxygen on they that. Work, taking they're him they're out. working on Something's him. Something's wrong. What, and, what and did that damage? It's something, it's something up in his eye or around his yeah, neck. Yeah, he kept you know, and winking. We, we're, we're worried about that. Well, but, he's, was, but he can still talk. And so what are you doing? Was the headbutt part of that? I don't know. I don't know. We I saw it on say. TV, and that was a hell of a headbutt. Oh, you saw a headbutt on TV? And he, and he winked. And he, and he had asked for timeout. I mean, you know, it was like he was bothered by the headbutt. And then when he came back, he didn't get hit. He went down on his own. As a Twice. Was hit yeah. Twice he went down. I've never yeah. seen a fighter do that when he's fighting for the championship. So uh, here I think um, the champion Nigel Ben went out and said something to the corner, but I don't think he can. nobody can communicate with Gerald. I think he's out. No, Gerald is laying there. They're talking to Gerald to see what it is that's bothering him, but they got him stressed out, and these guys are really doing a proficient and effective job. They're really working on him, as you say, taking care of all the medical needs that can be assisted to him right now. Well, he'll be coming through here. That's the major concern, as long as he doesn't be hurt. Well, he'll be coming through here in a, in a moment. But let's go back to New York and see what they're thinking. Arena. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, guys. We uh, Good news, he's talking now, Gerald McClellan. They gave him two injections. He was talking. Uh, you hear the applause in the background as uh, they're trying to get him uh, to an ambulance off to our right. I just received word, and this even adds uh, more craziness to this already bizarre night, that Nigel Ben just collapsed in his dressing room. I'm not sure what that's all about. It may have been just exhaustion. Let's just hope it's emotion and exhaustion. Yeah, I, I think it's emotion and surprise. What a night. He was brought up here. He's been given two injections. That's what brought him back around. That, that snaps you back around. That does not necessarily mean he's out of trouble. I mean, what it means is they got to find out why this collapsed three times he went down to indicate something is wrong up there. Now, he, his main complaint was around his eye. He was blinking, but then his neck got stiff on him. Now they put a, a, a collar on him. Now they put injections. Now they strapped him on and took him out. The interesting other thing is another person walked through here and said, well, the problem also is that Nigel, when he went outside the rope, stayed outside 15 seconds by official count instead of 10. That's the first one that we ever heard about that. It'll be good to, to, put a, uh, to put a clock on it and see how long he stayed out. It, it seemed extraordinarily long to me, to tell you the truth. I thought he was out. Well, so, uh, that's about it. As, uh, as uh, he makes his way out on the stretcher to the ambulance, again, you can hear the crescendo of applause here. Any, any final comment? Yes, I, I'm amazed. Both fighters have collapsed. I'm amazed at the finish. This is not over. This is not over yet. And so we will find out in a few minutes or a few hours when they take them where we're at as far as who's the champion and what's happened to both fighters. The end of a wild, compelling, bizarre night here at the London Arena in London, England. Steve Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Let's go back. Uh, they haven't had a chance to see uh, Gerald yet. They're, you know, they haven't had a chance to consult with uh, the surgeon, uh, Mr. Sutcliffe. And there'll be no statement uh, from the family until such time as they have a chance to visit with Gerald and talk to the uh, to the excellent surgeon. And
I think the areas that need to be looked at most carefully now is prevention. And in prevention, you need to look at a method whereby you can protect the boxers uh, from their own strength, because they really are now stronger than they've ever been, although their brain is still as susceptible as it's ever been. And those factors are the uh, number of rounds, the length of the rounds, to reduce the exposure. You have to look at giving them longer to recover between rounds, increasing that, that interbreak uh, interval. It's too early, they're all knee-jerk things and it's, it's, you know, they'll be an inquiry and they'll sort that out. Have spoken with his family yet? How are you feeling now? Yeah, I feel good so. So? Yeah. Could we ask what your plans are now for the future? I don't know, I have to see how Jeremy Taylor is first. Okay, stop. Obviously, obviously, that on your mind, you know, plan it. And me thinking about Gerald and me going in the ring and something happening to me because I'm not concentrating on it, it's, you know. But I can't really say how I'm going to feel until I know how he is. And it's like too much pressure, me being here at the moment, and just wishing him a speedy recovery. And me going away, then I can actually say to myself, well, he's pulled through, he's better, then I can start predicting what I'm going to do. But I'm going to start predicting anything, not until I know how he is. Do you, do you think it's the right thing to go away at this time? Yeah, the pressure from the kids and that, you know, we ain't left alone. Like now, I need to be able to have time with my, with my kids.